Do you like cats? Do you like Aizawa Sensei? Do you like Aizawa Sensei with a cat? Then stay tuned. What's up? It's Truth Hero, and welcome to the first ever My Hero Academia Vigilantes chapter review, also known as My Hero Academia Illegals. This is chapter 65 titled Angler Hero, and it wraps up Aizawa Sensei's flashback about cats and his time at UA High School. If you're wondering why Aizawa Sensei became the hero he did and how events in his past have affected his personality in My Hero Academia, this is the perfect read for you. Also, even though this chapter is kind of short and it's really moving towards a new arc, there are some important details about Trigger, the quirk enhancing drug that could affect the My Hero Academia manga canon. So let's dive in. This chapter starts with a flashback one year later after the tragedy involving Shirakumo. This is the event that changed Aizawa forever, made him finally find the strength he needs to become a hero. But it's also left a permanent mark on his personality. The third year students at UA are all discussing the last sports festival and their final chance to get recognized by scouts and top agencies. And Aizawa, like all of his friends in class, especially Hizashi, isn't about it. Also, this is perhaps my favorite thing about this chapter. Aizawa's constant napping and his sleeping bag habits started back when he was a third year at UA. The sports festival isn't the only thing Aizawa isn't too hyped about. Once he knows that he's doing really well in his classes, he just stops trying. And the same is true with his hero coursework. He's doing everything on his own, he's using the gym for solo training, and he's not really focusing on being a team player, which is kind of key for agencies in the future when they're working together. He has this conversation with his sensei, and he says, Once I graduate from UA, I'm going to go out and start my own hero agency. But I'm going to be an underground hero. I'm not going to learn from all these veteran heroes about what it means to be heroic. I'm not going to focus on rescuing and maybe even community service, maybe making people smile like All Might. No, I'm only going to focus on villain combat and capturing them. And his sensei is rather concerned about this. He tells him, look, yes, that is part of being a hero, but there's so much more to it. You should gain experience, and going through this whole program at UA is not so you can graduate and become some glorified bounty hunter. You're not a Mandalorian. As we know, this is exactly what Aizawa did. He's an underground hero who shies away from the media and simply cancels villains' quirks and then captures them. What do you guys think about this underground bounty hunter approach to being a hero? I mean, obviously Aizawa became a teacher at UA a bit after, but is he missing something in being a hero? Also, given that he is a teacher at UA, has this affected his teaching of Deku in Class 1A? Comment below. I think it does. Obviously, Aizawa Sensei is a really good teacher, and Class 1A is going to get some great instruction on being a hero, especially with their fundamentals. After all, he's a very logical guy. But Aizawa is missing that element of charisma that All Might would have. Obviously, All Might is not the best teacher when it comes to the textbook, but you can only teach teenagers that are emotional and thinking about being manly men like Kirishima so much from a book and so much from practical experience. I think Aizawa is really missing this emotional connection to being a hero that a Class 1A and Class 1B perhaps could use. The chapter jumps around from the past to the present a lot, and we finally jump back to the present day where Koichi and Aizawa are talking about the abandoned cat they found, which was responsible for this whole flashback in the first place. Those ever-scheming Hota brothers are actually going to open up a shop since they got money from villain insurance because they apparently own the land. They're pretty young for landowners, but whatever. We also meet one of their friends named Tokabe who, just like the Mantis guy, got caught up in the whole trigger scheme and accidentally attacked people like Koichi. He's also camping out with them. Tokabe, unfortunately, just like his Mantis friend, is still oversized and affected by the trigger side effects. And this begs the question for me, when will these side effects go away? When will his body and quirk return to normal? Or even, will it return to normal at all? Will the side effects ever go away? And if they do, will there be permanent damage? This also has major implications for the current arc of the My Hero Academia manga, since the new villain that was introduced, he goes by the name Ending, it looks like he used this trigger drug as he's taking Natsuo hostage. If Endeavor can somehow capture him alive and not kill him as he wishes, then we could find out more about the trigger drug. Also, we know from the latest episode of the anime, drugs that affect quirk usage vary wildly. Trigger could give you a boost that lasts a few minutes, or it could be a totally different strain from, say, America, where it could last much longer, even a few hours. So, given that this is the case, this new villain ending 
could have a quirk that's momentarily boosted or a quirk that's boosted for a few days, and this drastically affects how Endeavor will challenge and face this opponent. This cat that Koichi found is a big hit, and the Hoto brothers plan on using its cuteness to attract customers, especially cute high school girls. Yeah, because that'll work. Actually, it apparently does work because young cute high school girls like Kayama, young Midnight, was in love with the cat that Aizawa and his friends had back in the day. We then flip back to the past, back to his UA days, and everyone's talking about what their dream hero agency would have. Hisashi wants a soundproof studio where he can just cut loose with his voice. Shirakuma wants a rooftop space to eat meals, and all Aizawa wants is a cat tower for little sushi. Starting with just a single cat, these young heroes are ready to save anyone. Or at least that was the plan. Obviously, this youthful plan fell through, and Aizawa was thinking about how his dreams changed like the weather when they lost Shirakumo. The Hoto brothers tell Aizawa, look, we love having you around, but you gotta sit in the back when you come steal coffee from us because we can't have you out front scaring all the customers away with that hobo vibe. <laughs> Straight savage. I mean, Aizawa, I'm not really one to talk, but would it kill you to shave every once in a while? Aizawa is spacing out in this flashback, and he finally snaps too, and he says that he has this moment of clarity, just as the weather clears up, and that he thinks he'll leave town. Koichi asks him if this is a new job in some epic foreshadowing, which we'll talk about, but I think it's really nice that Aizawa looks back and says, I'll come visit the cat every now and again. If it wasn't already obvious, this moment of clarity is when Aizawa finally decides that he's going to become a teacher at UA, hence why Koichi said is this move job related. Now, we know that Midnight was encouraging this from the start, but due to Aizawa's underground persona he was always against it. But it took him having a flashback and looking back into his school days and seeing this tragedy for him to realize that there's more he needs to be doing. I really think that up until this point, Aizawa was fine with being the underground hero, but even he realizes it's not his fullest potential. Fighting villains is heroic, yes, but being some bounty hunter, blade runner, Boba Fett type, it's not that admirable, especially if you once wanted to save people and ease their hearts with your smile. Little Aizawa trying to smile is the best thing I've seen all month. What it really boils down to is, what is Aizawa leaving behind? If he can somehow teach kids to first find their own strength from within, and that they can be a hero once they do that, but also to rescue people and reassure them of peace in troubling times, then that'll be worth it. Now, Aizawa might not love kids as much as Midnight does, and I don't think anyone does, but he knows that this is a true calling, and it's his duty to help the next generation of heroes. Aizawa is definitely shaped by what happened to Shirakumo, that much is obvious. One of the first few episodes of My Hero Academia, Aizawa is telling Deku, who cares if you have all this power, this crazy strength quirk? If you are just put out of commission every time you use it, then someone will have to save you, and you won't be able to save yourself, or anyone. We can see how Aizawa's philosophy on being a hero, and in order to be a great one, you must first find the strength within so that you can save yourself and then others, really all goes back to this tragedy with Shirakumo and those early days at UA. What I've found about this chapter is that Aizawa is finally ready to walk a different path from the underground bounty hunter type of hero. And what's really ironic is, it took him meeting people like Koichi and Knuckle Duster to realize this. It took him meeting vigilantes to realize that he was sort of doing the same thing as a vigilante, although he's licensed. But if you think about it, a vigilante is not going to go to some community service gig. They're not going to go to a site of a natural disaster. They're not really going to rush into a burning building. I mean, Usually. What they're going to focus on is beating up common criminals when no other heroes are around, protecting the neighborhood people from common thugs. And this, up until this point, was all Aizawa was doing. He was going around canceling villains' quirks and then capturing them. He wasn't really in the spotlight or giving people a sense of peace like All Might and other heroes. So now Aizawa realizes this. He has so much more to offer the world if he could just smile, and now he can finally teach the youth of Japan how to be a proper hero. I wonder if in the future of this series, given this experience that Aizawa's had in meeting people like Koichi, that he'll be more sympathetic to vigilantes than other heroes that would probably just arrest them, because he kind of understands them better. Also, now that it is kind of suggested that Aizawa will be starting at UA soon, I wonder if we'll see the first class he ever teaches. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about this chapter down in the comments below. 
What will we see from Aizawa in the future? Perhaps his first class? And how will Koichi and the other vigilantes keep in touch with this hero? Also, with what we know about Trigger and everything going on in the current arc of the My Hero Academia manga, is there some big implications here? Leave your philosophies below. If you like My Hero Academia content and these vigilante chapter reviews, consider enrolling at UA today by subscribing. And until next time, plus ultra.